Darren Collison's retirement was a big surprise leading into free agency this past offseason, but according to Adrian Wojnarowski, he's considering a return in February with the Clippers and Lakers as his preferred destinations. Ah, could we all be that lucky? Matt, what would be the better fit for him, Clippers or Lakers? I think Lakers. Uh, I think he's someone that can get his own shot with that second unit, which they desperately need. Someone that can run the pick and roll. Someone who plays both sides of the ball and, and can knock down that mid-range shot. I, I would hesitate going to the Clippers, one, because when we were there together, I don't know how well him and Doc got along. Mm. And then, two, with that second unit, with Darren with the ball, he's taking the ball to lose hands. So those are two things that kind of concern me, but I definitely think the Lakers would be a great fit. I think the Lakers could use him more, that's for sure. But I feel like the framework of the Clippers is one that might allow him to get a little bit better into it just because of what you said. He's got to know that relationship, and maybe as a veteran he figures that out. But shouts to this dude. Let me take a quick sabbatical. Let me go ahead and not play and then realize I want to come back and then pick between the two teams. I mean, I'm just going to say this speaks to what a player control league this is. Now, I understand he turned down a lot of money from a free agent standpoint, but this was kind of unheard of at a certain point in the league, and I love him for being able to do it. I hope it works out. If the Lakers can land, him, it would be what a, a fortuitous turn of events because not only did the DeMarcus thing not work out, they ended up with Dwight Howard, right. who's been huge Amazing. for them. If they could add Collison to this stage of the year, wow. I mean, he was a guy who was considered to be in line for $10 million a year. Mm -hmm. They could get him for the veteran minimum plus the uh, player exception, disabled player exception right. they get for Dwight. That's a bargain yeah. on top of being a person who can really help them. Do, do you see mutual interest in that way? Oh, I mean, the, the Lakers, and I, I reported this on uh, Brian Windhorst's Hoop Collective podcast uh, several weeks ago, backup point guard is the number one priority as they look towards uh, improving their roster as we go to the post. I feel like this is the same conversation we're going to have in March when Andre Iguodala gets bought out because he won't get traded because the Grizzlies are asking too much. Iguodala is going to have a decision to go, should I go to a team like the Lakers that needs me or a team like the Clippers that probably doesn't need me as much, but is maybe a better team. And I think that's that's the same thing that Collison would probably have to weigh if, if he does. And there's extra the motivation of blocking the other team from getting Yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah, Some, part one. of it is just keep away. Yeah. All right, let's get to the Sixers, who are in action on ESPN tomorrow. In their previous game, they lost to the Pacers by 18 on New Year's Eve. Josh Richardson wasn't happy with the Sixers after that loss. Here's what he told the Philadelphia Inquirer, quote, I don't think there's enough accountability in our locker room right now, honestly. I think that we got some new guys who don't want to step on toes, including myself. I think we kind of go play and don't compete as much. Clinton, uh, well, Brett Brown responded today. Yeah. And this, and this is what he said. He said he's fine with it. Uh, I'm fine with it. I live in the truth really well. I like the truthful discussions. If they feel they can be more candid with one another, then so be it. All right, Clinton. What does this say to me? What, what does all this mean? This says to me, we all miss Jimmy Butler in mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Yeah. Because oh. accountability now we is miss what Jimmy, Jimmy G. <laughs> Buckets brought to the table uh -huh. when it came to dealing with young players, when it came to how veterans were approaching the game. That was his core strength as the guy in your locker room. You see it down there in Miami and how much that team has improved. Look, I don't necessarily think accountability is even their even biggest problem, but I do think that they miss Butler in this regard. Yeah, I mean, and also, like, how can they be so much on the seesaw? A week ago, <laughs> yeah. they were pounding the Milwaukee Bucks on Christmas Day, and what, there was no accountability then. Right. They're having that much success. So, to me, tone setter. That's what it speaks yeah. to me. And Jimmy Butler was that guy. Now, Joel Embiid addressed these comments today at practice, and he see, said, we need to be comfortable outside of our comfort zone, including sometimes if there's space to, on the floor, we need to be comfortable shooting it. What does that mean? It means that he's saying Ben Simmons without saying Ben Simmons' name. <laughs> okay. So, Matt, is it a structural thing, or do you think it's what Josh it's was just, just talking about? It's leadership. About? You know, it's leadership. It's what the question mark on this team has always been. Who's going to be the leader? Jimmy Butler filled that void perfectly. He took the bullets. He took everything. He let people know what was going on, and they, and they played well. So not having him, all right, who's the leader? Is Joel Embiid the leader, or does he play too much? Is Ben Simmons the leader, or is he too quiet? They don't have a leader, and to me, what Josh Richardson said is on point, but say it to your team. There's right. no need to take this to the media. Let's just hold the team meeting and clear the, clear the air. I think too often we take stuff that should stay in the locker room and take it outside the locker room and allow us to kind of dive in and break that locker room up a little bit. But to me, who's going to be the leader on that team? That should be a, a team conversation. I'm still mad at Ben Simmons for not playing in the World Cup when he could have improved his game that way and decided he was going to be on Instagram. <laughs> in the gym with his homies, that's accountability on the larger level that some people might believe is part of the issue. Big fan of Australian basketball, Clinton Yates. Thank hey, you man. so much for joining us. I'm trying. <laughs>